lovely warm morning for September. So bright. Getting more of these Indian summers as the years go by now, so it seems. There's not as much wind as I first thought. It's supposed to be quite a strong northwesterly today, but uh, such a huge water here, it's always difficult to know where to start. The breeze is blowing onto that first island, so I think I'll walk round there and fish close into the bank there where it's quite deep. It's a super water, this. It's probably now one of the best carp waters in Britain. I would think it's so heavily stocked with fish up to an over 30 pounds. There's also some bream, a few tench, and what we've actually come here for, some roach. Hopefully one or two good ones. Can't resist wild bone bridge. Lovely patch of wild flowers here where the grass hasn't been cut. Well, I don't know, this weather can't make up its mind. There's a, there's a ripple one minute and it goes calm the next. How those carp guys cart all their gear right over to the other bank along by the church, they're on never know. It's bad enough coming this far. You don't really realise how large this lake is until you get out on one of these islands and you look across to the far bank, it really is wide. Seems to be a lot of clouds up there. It looks like we're going to have some dark mixed in with this brightness. That won't do the fishing any harm. This is the island swim, I fancy. It's quite deep close in here. And there's a gentle cross ripple, as long as it doesn't get up too heavy. There's a, a couple of uh, coots over there work, working that far shoreline. There's a, there's a grebe, a couple of grebes over there. One or two sand martins, it looks lovely. Right. It's a nice ledge here for me to Ooh. fish from as well. Oh, well here we are. We're all set up. I've got a 14-foot waggler rod made up with a 2AA waggler on. I'm just gonna put some maggots out. I've put a couple of balls of ground bait out already. I've seen quite a few small fish flipping there. The water's lovely and flat. Probably not very good for good quality roach, but it's, uh, it's nice for bite registration. Put a couple on a size 16. I've got a fairly light bottom on a one and a half pound breaking strain bottom. Here we go. <laughs> Actually, very nearly didn't. Uh, I don't know, we're a bit close in there, but we'll leave it. Very nearly didn't make it here at all. I took all my fishing tackle into. Oh, there's a bite already. Oh, took all my fishing tackle into work yesterday to mess about with it and put some new lines on and that. And I left the rods in the car for a few hours, came to go home in the evening, and they were gone. So went back to the shop rang Barbara up and she rang the police and I didn't know what to do so I potted about in the shop, hastily got a few other bits and pieces together and uh, belted off for home and about a mile the other side of Norwich there was a drunk staggering along clutching an armful of my rods. So I got out of the car, he was too far gone for me to get too aggressive with him. I felt a bit sorry for him really and uh, I was more interested in my old centre pin that fortunately was still there. I grabbed them off him. He mentioned something about not saying anything to police and this, that and the other. And I was in such a hurry, I told him to go away or words to that effect. And got most of the... Oh, I oh, missed it. Talking too much again. Anyway, we got most of the gear back and here we are. That's the main thing. Right, let's put a few more maggots out. 
sun's going in and out here like a, like a yo-yo. Hello, we've got a bike there. Oh, yes. Goodness me. I oh, know, this feels a better fish. Oh, yes. It feels like a nice roach. Oh, yes, it is a roach. Oh, nice one. Oh, super. Come on. Oh, gotcha. Oh, yes, that looks a good pound. Oh, that's magic. Oh, that's nice. Lovely fish. Always love roach. Probably because I caught them first when I was a kid. Everybody catches a roach as their first fish, or they used to. A little bit too far over depth there. Let's lay hard on the bottom and see if they... See if they take, yes, they're taking it off the bottom as well. There we go again. Oh, there must be two in, look at those rising right out of the water there. <laughs> Still, it's nice to see so... Nice to see so many little roach, actually. There's so few in some of the rivers nowadays that... Uh, and I truly believe the future in fishing is in gravel pits. And whilst I suppose I'd sooner be trotting in a river any day, it's, uh, it's nice to see that some waters are breeding lots of roach. There are millions in here. Problem being, of course, to get past them to the bigger fish. In 30 acres of water, it's, uh, it's a bit of a hit-and-miss affair. Now, I'm a little bit too deep there, but that's not a bad thing. We'll just keep it on the bottom. Here we go again. Yes. Oh, it's a little better. Well, <laughs> as they go. <laughs> Hello, it's a little bream hybrid. Roach bream hybrid. Pretty little fish. I didn't really think there was many bream in here, but I bumped into the owner this morning and he said that uh, there's quite a few breeding now. There's lots of little hybrids coming along as well. When I first fished here at Homersfield, there was a lot of perch in the water. And then there was that perch disease of the late 60s. And then the, the water went through a a complete change about ten years ago. The perch started to fade away and there was lots of roach left. They grew bigger. And the last time I fished it was when Norman Simmons first obtained the water about seven years ago and I came to wreck it and roach fished and caught mountains of roach and they were all super sized because they'd grown quite a lot with the demise of the perch. And of course subsequent to that Norman has stopped very heavily with carp and now you've got the the benefit of a tremendous stock of carp, plus one or two very big roach still left. And these have now bred, and there's a few hybrid hybrids amongst them with one or two bream, and there's a tremendous stock of fish here. If anything, there's too many small ones if you can actually have such a bad thing as that. Coming a little bit closer now, we've got this... Hello. <laughs> well, that proved worthwhile. I think I was putting too many maggots out there. Oh, this feels like a good roach. I was putting far too many maggots out there, really, and filling it up with little ones. Oh, oh. <laughs> no, it isn't a roach. It's, it looks like a bream or a... Could be a roach bream hybrid. Oh, I thought I'd got a really good roach then. Yes, it's a hybrid. Oh, well. Here we are, roach bream hybrid of about a pound. A lot of people have trouble distinguishing between roach and bream in these hybrids, so let's have a look at the differences now. Here we are, here's the differences. This is the, your true ordinary bream. It's got a very long anal fin. The hybrid's fin's nowhere near so long. And of course, here's the, the classical roach with the vermilion fins. And you can actually see here the, that that's a hybrid. It's obviously not a bream and it's obviously not a roach. It's not as warm as the roach in colouring. It's not as pale as the bream. It's a little bit darker. It's thinner, like a roach, but it's got this breamy, distinct breamy look. The, the greyness of the fins.
Well, I think I'll try one more cast, but it's gone very grim here now. It's even starting to spit with rain. Still, under these conditions, I suppose a dozen roach or so to about a pound's not too bad, although I'd like to have gotten into some of the big ones that I've caught here. My favourite method of roach fishing is long trotting. So let's go and have a go on the Tidal River Bureau at St Bennett's Abbey. See you there. Well, here we are on the Tidal River Bure in front of St Bennett's Abbey. It's quite a chilly morning, although it's bright sunshine after the mist. I'm sure it's going to bring a nice warm, sunny day. Perhaps too warm and sunny for roach fishing, but September nonetheless. I've already had one or two good roach up to about half a pound. It looks quite promising. A lot of muck on the surface. It's going quite a rate too at the moment. It's ebbing quite strongly. That sounds as though the cruisers are waking up. Within an hour or so, we're going to have a boat to cast. But this oh, missed that one. But this is the problem with tidal river roaching. Really, you just have to hack the boats. If you can't hack the boats, you might as well not be on the river. Try a couple of maggots. This particular stretch gets quite heavily match fished, really, and they're fairly fine. So I'll, uh, I'll have to uh, go down to a pound hook link later on and a 20 hook or something like that. At the moment, I'm on a 16 and, and a 17 bottom. That's light enough for this, this time of the morning. And by dictating where my boat's situated, not too far from the bank, I can maintain this course. I can even come in a little bit closer should the boat traffic get too heavy. With a stick float dotted down as much as I've got this one, it's very difficult to, to make out when it goes into any sort of shadow. And I'm looking into the sun. I think I'll get the Polaroids out in a minute. But it does. it's lovely when you get a bite. You can see it instantly. The fish has only got to touch that maggot and you're into a fish. It's in the shadow of a tree at the moment. Oh, it's out of it now. I'll see the slightest little thing. It's going down there just nicely. Lovely stick float fishing. I absolutely adore it. I think it's my favourite method of trotting, sitting in a boat like this and getting these hard fighting tidal river roach. And the river's really pulling, they really do go well. But we're not getting a bite this this flow down. Let's Hold back hard a second and straighten the line and let it go through again. Oh, there's one. Oh. Feels like a good fish. Oh, yes, that's a nice roach. Oh. Super. Oh, lovely. That's the best part of a pound. That's a nice looking roach. Super. Yeah. Let's put him in the net. This is just nice, this flow now, about the middle of the tide. It's, it's pulling this line from the centre pin just lovely. I've got a 3BB stick on and it's it's just nice. It's not going too fast, not going too slow. It's just holding the float's passage up just fractionally. It's going down there as steady as a rock. I'll just ease that float back fractionally. Hello, I'm rocking, <laughs> rocking like a top here. 
just held that back a little and straighten the line a little and off we go again. Hello. This feels like a better fish. Oh, yes, it's a good... Go on, it must be a good roach. It can only be a roach. It's much too powerful for a bream. You get that lovely dog, 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 dog. Oh, yeah, it is a roach. Super. Oh, magic. It's, it's a lovely roach. Let's put him in the keep net. Oh. Well, here we are. The tide's just turned. I've repositioned the boat. It's now coming back from Yarmouth and heading on towards Roxham. This makes it a little bit more coloured, and sometimes that helps. I've just had a small roach about six inches. The boats are still a bit of a problem, though. There's another one now. I don't know if go fast. I don't know. Thought I had a twitch then. No. I'm dragging bottom quite heavily, really. Here we go again. It's a very popular spot here where I'm fishing at St Bennett's Abbey. It's, it's much loved by tourists and, of course, anglers. It, it was here that the late Ken Smith won the All England Championship in, 19, in the 1960s with over 50 pounds of bream. And behind me here, there's tourists looking at the what's left of the old ruins of St Bennett's Abbey. I think the monks departed somewhere in the mid-15th centuries. Not before they did a bit of good for anglers, at least they gave us some carp in this area with their, with their stew ponds. Oh, there's one. Feels like a good fish. Oh, yes, that's a nice roach. Oh, super. Oh, lovely. Oh, that's the best part of a pound. Oh, lovely fish. Oh. Let's put him in the net. Oh. Well, that was a nice fish to end the day on. It's gone a bit grim, really, and I've had enough of these boats, as usual. One of the problems with tidal river fishing on the broads, you've got to suffer the boats all day long, but we've got quite a few fish here, actually. It's not too bad. Actually, it's more than I thought. Oh, there must be 40 or 50 good roach in there. Super, that's a lovely end to the day. two ways of roach fishing so far. We've been onto a beautiful gravel pit to try and catch some big ones, and we only caught small ones. We've been on the Tidal River Bure at St Bennett's Abbey for some long trotting. And here we are, our final fling. We've come to a tiny little Norfolk stream to see if we can get some better quality roach. But so far, all, I'm, all I seem to be catching is small ones. Here we are, there's another one. 
I had a very good fish earlier on that I've put in the net on Quivertip bread flake, and then the bites petered out, so uh, I've gone on to trotting maggots now. Some lovely little fish in here. It's nice to see so many roach in this little stream for the future. I'm using a couple of bronze maggots on a 16 hook, and I've got a, a light waggler just going downstream gently. There's very, very little flow here, and the, there's quite a strong downstream wind. Every now and again, it gusts quite a bit. The funny thing about these little streams is, though, they do tend to, on average, produce far larger roach than the bigger rivers. You tend to get little pockets of small fish, and I'm into one right, right now. But every now and again, you get one or two good quality things. Oh, yes! Oh, another fish right at the end of the run there. Feels a better fish, oh, yes. Much better. Be careful as I pump this upstream. I don't want to pull that small hook out. Oh, that's a better fish, definitely. Come on. <laughs> don't come out now, please. Oh, yes, it's a lovely roach. <laughs> oh. Oh, let's net that one. Super. Oh, lovely. Oh, yes, that's lovely. Might have to put the brolly up, I think. Yeah. Let's get the old brolly up. I don't fancy getting wet today. I don't really like trotting under a brolly. It's uh, hamper style, really, a bit. But uh, then again, I don't want to get absolutely soaking wet either. Let's just nestle that in. More of a windbreak, really. That will stop some of the the heavy rain. I'm on this bed of floating rush here and, <laughs> and the stool's nearly disappeared under the water. Oh. I've just dunked my centre pin. Oh dear, that might improve matters, never mind. Right, oh that's nice, a couple of good fish. Right, this time I think I'll try a bunch of maggots. This weather looks as though it's set in for the afternoon. One nice thing is the... the rain into the river further upstream has kept the colour, which is a good thing. Let's try along the far bank. Whoops. That's better. Keep that line well out there. The rain's falling a bit heavier now. Strange things happen today. I've had some some fish, mainly dace, when the rain's been really heavy, and I can't remember ever catching many fish when it's really been pouring. It's starting to pick up now. I've had the odd fish just before it's poured with rain, and then I've played it into the rain, but I can't remember repeatedly getting bites whilst the surface really been... Dippled. I think it's something to do with the, the drumming on the surface affects the fish's nervous system and their lateral line, and they seem to, seem to go a little bit quiet and not feed so heavy. But a lot of these dace in here today have been biting quite hard whilst it's been raining. I wish there was a little bit more flow, though. It could ease presentation so much nicer. This is really too slow. Well, we fished a 35-acre gravel pit and we fished Norfolk's Tidal River Bure. It's rather ironic, really, that we should come to a little tiny stream like this and catch the biggest roach. We've got four super fish there, the best probably, oh, I don't know, getting on for a pound and a half. I'm just going to take a photo before I put them back. That's lovely.